Coming up next, more water woes in the city of San Diego. We're working for you to find out why so many of you are having billing problems. Plus, UC workers, students, and others statewide call on regions to address the housing affordability crisis. Spring is here, and that also means allergy season has arrived. Some of the aggravators to avoid so you can keep a clear head. And efforts for a professional canine therapy program at Rady Children's Hospital. How you can help out tonight. This is CBS 8 News Live at 6. Breaking news tonight, more than two weeks after Super Tuesday, Prop 1 has officially passed. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. The state measure is centered around a $6.4 billion bond to update mental health systems for the first time in 20 years and tackle the homelessness crisis. It imposes a strict requirement on counties when it comes to spending. The measure won by just over 21,000 votes. For more election results, visit our website, cbs8.com forward slash elections. CBS 8 is working for you to get to the bottom of water billing problems in the city of San Diego. We continue to receive emails from customers whose bills have been suspended. CBS 8's David Godfordson spoke with people in Mission Hills who believe the city isn't being honest with the public. The meter is right here. It's been four months since Mission Hills homeowner Ken Pirelli got a notice in the mail that his water bills were being withheld, pending an investigation by the city of San Diego into, quote, abnormal water usage. The first reaction is to panic that you have a leak under a slab and that you're going to be facing a uh, expensive uh, plumbing repair bill. Ken called a plumber and checked for water leaks but nothing seemed abnormal. I investigated the abnormal reading, and you can see that there's dirt in front of the meter, so the abnormal reading is that there was no reading taken, I believe. When Ken went on Nextdoor, he found dozens of similar complaints by neighbors. Well, between March of 2023 and September of 2023, I did not receive a bill. Neighbor Patty Ducey Brooks's water bill is now more than $2,400 after a city investigation found problems with her water meter. She believes the city is trying to charge her too much, so she refused to pay. How do you charge somebody when you have no evidence that the water was even used? CBS 8 has been working for you investigating water billing problems for more than a year. The city is now notifying people when their water bills are being withheld. And last month, the city's public utilities director told CBS 8 he was working to reduce the number of withheld bills, which amount to more than 24,000 customers. I don't believe that the underlying problem is 24,000 people with excess water usage. I think that's being used as a shield to mask the real problem. Now, the city tells me 98% of water bills are sent to customers on time, and the city says they have recently hired 10 new customer service workers who will begin in April and May. If you want more information, go to CBS8.com. In Kearney Mesa, David Goffertson, CBS8. Thank you, David. And here at CBS8, we want to help solve problems that affect you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. More than a dozen people were arrested during a fentanyl crackdown earlier this month. San Diego police partnered up with the Department of Homeland Security during a 10-hour operation March 1st. The teams arrested nine people on suspicion of dealing fentanyl. Eight others were arrested on misdemeanor charges. Anyone with information about illegal fentanyl sales is asked to call Crime Stoppers. The owner of Roland Root's food truck that burned down in 2021 has been sentenced for starting that fire. He also defrauded an insurance company and San Diegans out of more than $300,000. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is following this story for you. She joins us live now with details. Kirsten. Yeah, five years and four months in a California state prison. That was the sentence handed down from a judge today. Avante Hartsfield, the former owner of Roland Root's food truck, he maintains his innocence and he's representing himself in court saying he will appeal. The evidence in the case, I do not believe overwhelmingly shows that I was even involved in the incident. 
throughout the trial, the prosecution still was unable to prove that uh, how the fire even started um, two years later. That's Avante Hartsfield representing himself at his sentencing, maintaining his innocence that he did not start the fire that destroyed his Rolling Roots food truck back in 2021. Hartsfield says he was at home at the time of the fire and that statements to police putting him at the scene were false confessions. The jury has spoken um, that he was guilty on all four charges of arson and two counts of insurance fraud and grand theft from GoFundMe. Uh, the judge has sentenced him today to state prison for those actions. Deputy District Attorney Judy Tashner says Hartfield lied to police, insurance company, and San Diegans when he raised more than $100,000 in donations because he was found guilty of arson, insurance fraud, and grand theft for setting fire to his food truck and claiming he was the victim of a hate crime. The defendant preyed on the San Diego community on the, the trust and on the good natured spirit, on the good hearts that our community has. As for Hartsfield maintaining his innocence? He's just not taking any responsibility for any of his actions in this case. Next in the case, a restitution hearing where the court will figure out how much Hartsfield has to pay back from donations, including the $20,000 donation he got from the Siquan Band of the Kumayai Nation. Hartsfield says he will appeal. He's had a chance to be heard, he's had a chance to argue, and everyone has a right and, and to appeal. GoFundMe, a representative from GoFundMe, testified in this trial, and they are seeking $25,000 in restitution. That doesn't include the $20,000 that came from Sikwan. We reached out to GoFundMe for comment on this story so far. We haven't heard back, but that restitution hearing is scheduled for Monday, April 22nd at 1.30. For CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Thanks, Kirsten. So we know that Hartsfield raised more than $100,000 on GoFundMe, but the platform is only seeking $25,000 in restitution. Do we know why? Okay, so we don't have the answer to that question. We reached out to GoFundMe for comment on this story and to get some clarification on that, but so far we haven't heard back. But on their website, GoFundMe says that they have a donor protection guarantee that says full refunds are guaranteed in the rare case that something isn't right. We'll keep you posted on the story as it develops. Carlo? Something definitely wasn't right there. Kirsten Holmes reporting for us. Thanks, Kirsten. A proposed 1% sales tax increase for the city of San Diego is moving forward. The city council's rules committee unanimously advanced the proposal today. It will now go back to the committee for a second reading and will need approval from the full council before it can go on the November ballot, where you will have a say. If passed, San Diego's sale tax rate would increase from 7.75%, the current rate, to 8.75%. Supporters say it's needed for road repairs, storm drains, and public safety. Critics say it doesn't make any sense in a time of higher prices and city budget problems. Thousands of University of California employees are demanding the regents do something to address the housing crisis they say is now affecting the university system's frontline employees. The union representing more than 30,000 employees formed picket lines at campuses across the state, including UC San Diego today. CBS 8's Jesse Pagat is here with what the workers are demanding and what the university system is saying tonight. Jesse? Yeah, this specific union represents low-wage workers and patient care workers in the university hospitals. They're asking for higher wages, but specifically because of how expensive housing has gotten and the UC's investments in housing companies. Poverty wages got to go, hey, hey, go home. Wearing green and carrying signs. Screen your workers like you should. UC San Diego students, employees, and tenants hit the picket line on campus. We're here 24 hours a day, and we feel like we need to be more invested in. Dina Johnson is one of the thousands of employees picketing at UCSD, UCLA, and other campuses as the union bargains for a new contract with the university system. They're demanding higher wages, but also for the system to divest in private equity funds working in the housing industry and instead use reserves and university-owned land to build affordable housing for employees. I'm a single mom with two kids, right? I live in City Heights, and I can't even move anywhere because 
The rent is ridiculous. I'm here to make sure to let the UC system know and remind them that they are a public entity. They are accountable to the public. They're accountable to their workers. National City Council member Jose Rodriguez was at today's picket line at UCST. He says one fund the UC invests in bought and flipped three apartment complexes in his district and raised rents, effectively gentrifying the area. Their purpose is not to continue to make more money or invest in companies that hurt our neighborhoods. Their purpose is to serve our students and to serve our workers and to serve our community. In a statement, a UC spokesperson tells CBS 8 the system's proposed an average 26 percent raise in salary for the life of this next contract during the negotiations, adding in part, quote, while UC has no control over statewide rents or housing costs, we know the cost of living in California is high. By providing employees with competitive wages and regular pay increases, we aim to help our employees with their cost of living expenses. Negotiations between UC and the AFSCME 3299 union started in January. The system says it proposed that higher pay early in negotiations, but they'll continue until both sides reach an agreement. Carlo, Marcella. Thanks, Jesse. Tonight, cyclists are calling for change after a deadly bike crash in Encinitas over the weekend. 48-year-old Ryan Curry was found dead in one of the bike lanes on Highway 101. Sheriff's deputies say he wasn't wearing a helmet and they don't believe a vehicle was involved in his death. Four years ago, the city installed these barriers that separate cars and bikes on the stretch of Highway 101. The barriers are meant to protect the lanes, but instead, some cyclists tell us those barriers are a hazard because cyclists can crash into the wheel stops. Since they've gone in, we've, we're aware of 32 such crashes and the tragedy at the weekend was, was just the latest in a long line of, of crashes. Wallace tells us he just wants the city to remove the barriers. We reached out to Mayor Tony Kranz's office, but have not heard back. Still ahead, the big problem with the winter season and visitors brought to the Sierra Nevada this year. Plus, viral posts claim Target and Walmart are about to start charging you for using self-checkout. We verify. Saw a lot of sunshine for today. Also talking about some big poofy clouds out there and a big poofy pink wig. More details on why I'm rocking this still and your forecasts after the break. And up next, what could be making your allergies worse this spring? Achoo.